this video, we're going to cover the use of opacity and flow sliders in your brush setting to control the rate at which you lay down a mask on an adjustment layer in Capture One. We're also going to cover this little airbrush option here as well, because that has an impact on these two functions. But it's opacity and flow that are terms that are often confusing because they're used interchangeably to describe quite often the same thing. So in this session, we're not going to cover why you're drawing masks or how to get the best um, result out of an image. We're just going to cover what these two functions do and the impact they have on your image. So first thing is, let's just look at a mask. So here is a, an image with a mask loaded on. Let's just darken our exposure on the adjustment layer. So that adjustment layer, you can see it's not having any effect in the middle and it's having a lot of effect on the top and bottom. And the reason is because we've painted a mask. So to see the mask that we've painted, let's press the M button on the keyboard, M for mask. And we can see it, the default in Capture One is to display the mask in a translucent red. So the deeper the red, the more mask has been painted, for instance, down here. The lighter the red, the less mask has been painted. So we have a fall off here in our masks, which means that that exposure at the darkest parts of the mask is having its full effect. But as it tapers off, it's a more nuanced effect and it softly feathers out into having no effect here in the, in the water. Now, there is a challenge with seeing the mask in red, and here's a perfect example. So if we look in the sky up here, I don't know whether I've painted a huge amount of masking up here or whether there's just red in the sky. So press the M button on the keyboard again. Let's turn the mask off. And actually, it turns out it's because there's some red in the sky. So press M again to turn the mask on. That masking tool is really handy when we're trying to mask around objects or look at shadows and highlights and so on, but it doesn't help us see the actual mask that we've drawn in a huge amount of detail. But there is a tool in Capture One that lots of people don't use that we really should, um, which does exactly that. So if I click on this little eye icon in the layers palette, I've got the option here, obviously, always display mask, and it gives me the keyboard shortcut M. And I've got the option here, never display mask, which is also the keyboard shortcut of M. So in other words, on or off. Press M turns it on, press M turns it off. We've got this nice function here, which says only display the mask when you're drawing one. That can be really good. So it turns it off the second you let go of the brush. But this is the really valuable one, display grayscale mask. And the shortcut for that on the keyboard is Option and M on a Mac or Alt and M on a, on a Windows machine. So let's just click this. And again, I can press M on the keyboard to turn the mask off. And we go back to standard, turn it off completely. Or I press Option M and I go to my grayscale mask. When I go to the grayscale mask, it's going to warn me up here. There's a little warning from Capture One saying, just bear in mind, you're looking at a mask. You're not looking at the picture. So for example, even though these areas are white, black, and gray, if I change my exposure, it's going to have no effect whatsoever on what I'm seeing. So be very careful. These are the adjustments to the image here. It's not the adjustment to the mask. All the adjustments to the mask are made in this dialog, which is our either our brush or our grayscale or our radial, um, sorry, our graduate filter, our gradient mask filter, or our radial gradient filter. So in here, we can see that actually that image had quite a complex mask set up on it. It actually had some of the cloud wisps and everything isolated, and it wasn't just a flat 100% mask. And that's why we need opacity and flow. So to show this, let's go and create a brand new empty exposure layer, oh, sorry, empty adjustment layer. And with our adjustment layer, obviously the mask shows as black where there's nothing that's gonna be applied. So it doesn't matter um, if I change exposure or contrast or whatever, the areas of black in a mask in the grayscale version of the mask have no effect whatsoever. Through to, let's put this to 100 and 100. If I paint this area here, that would have maximum effect on my picture. So let's press M to get rid of the grayscale mask. Let's just have a look at what that would do. Let's turn our exposure down and we can see, there we go. So the area that I masked has now got a darker exposure and the area that I didn't mask is completely left alone. So Option and M or Alt and M to go back to our mask. And I'm just gonna clear that. And we're gonna first dive into what opacity does. So a lot of people um, will look at the definitions of these and it confuses, it confuses me. Um, so we refer to this as the density of the um, brush and, and so on and flow is the rate at which it changes. As photographers, it's actually in my head a little bit simpler to think of this just like you were doing a long exposure at night. So opacity refers to effectively how bright the light that you're painting is. So if I set my opacity down to 10 or around there, at 100% flow, it doesn't matter how many times I go over this area, that was how bright 
the light was. That's how much mask I'm painting on. If I set this to, let's say 50, and paint, we now have a brighter brush. So we're painting more mask, more opacity into the mask, and that's gonna have obviously more of an effect. But just like with photography, when we paint with light, it's the same as when we're painting with a mask. With that same opacity, if I paint over these two areas, it's additive. So I've just painted now another 50% over the background, which is now relatively dark, well, it's 50%. I've painted it over this area, which already had some opacity painted on it. So that's had some effect on top of that. And you can see that here with where the areas overlap. And this area that already had 50%, we've painted another 50% on top of it. So it's additive. So these opacities, effectively, I can add and add and add, and I can use that to feather some of our masking. So we can use that to create some little effects and so on as we're starting to stripe around clouds and, and so on. But opacity effectively tells us at 100% flow where to stop. And what I mean by that is flow is, the, is basically the amount of times we're going over the same area in one stroke. So let me just clear this mask to get rid of this uh, distraction. Let's do that. So we had a 50% opacity at 100% flow. And we know that if we paint once, as long as I keep the mouse button down, it's going to paint 100% of that 50% brightness onto my mask. And no matter how many times I go over it, it's not going to have any effect whatsoever. It's going to stop at 50%. Here's another one, 50%. But the additive function says if I now let go with the mouse and click again, I'm adding another 50% on top of this. Okay. But flow is different. Flow, if I set my opacity to 100 and our flow to 50%, if I go over one area just once, it paints 50%. But actually in this case, it's not necessarily possible to go over it once because as you can see, each pixel has had some time spent on it as I drew that line. But if I go over it again, it's added to. So we're up to 100 pretty quickly. That makes sense. We've just added 50% of flow and another 50% to 100% opacity. But I don't have to let go with the mouse on flow each time. I can just sit and keep it going and it will keep adding as long as I keep brushing over the same area. Here's where the two interoperate. If I set my opacity to 50 and my flow to 50, the first brush is going to give me effectively 25, right? 50% of 50. The second brush is going to get me to 50 or to 100% of 50. And then the more I paint, it doesn't make a difference because the flow is going to keep adding. It's going to keep adding another 50% more, 50% more, 50% more, 50% more. So why isn't it getting brighter? And the reason it's not getting brighter is because it's 50% of that 50% opacity. So it's never going to go beyond that level of opacity on this stroke. If I let go and click again, we can add another 50% opacity in 50% increments. So the flow is effectively the increment that we add up to this limit of opacity. And this is why the two actually work very well together. So if, for example, let's just uh, clear down our mask. If we had an example of 20% flow of 100% opacity, you can imagine that as I draw across, that's a 20% line. If I draw across and back, that's a 40% line across, back, and again, that's 60%, across, back, again, and again, that's 80, and across, back, again, again, and again, and we're at 100. So each time I went over the same area, I was adding 20% more of 100% opacity. Let's clear that mask and switch these two around. So let's set our opacity to 20. Something weird happened with the keyboard there, and flow to 100. So, draw one line, 
draw another line, go back on it. Well, that doesn't make a difference. It's still 20%. Oh, it's still 20%. It's getting a bit bigger, but the brightness isn't changing. And the reason is because it's limited to 20% on each application. It was already 100% flow. It had already painted 100% of 20%. To get this to higher, I'd need to let go of the mouse and click again. And that now drops another 100% of 20. Let go, number one, let go. Another layer, number two, let go. Another layer, number three, let go. So we can do that four times. So let go, let go, let go, let go. So we get to 80% and then roughly 80%. The maths don't actually work out quite that way. Uh, but each time with each stroke, we're letting go with the mouse and we're just adding each time 100% of the opacity that we've told Capture One to apply. So that's the, how they work differently. Effectively, flow, as long as I keep my mouse down on the same area and go over it and over it and over it in one stroke, I'm adding and adding and adding more of whatever opacity I've dialed in. Whereas opacity, it's going to keep adding and adding and adding until we get to white effectively at whatever rate I've told it to do that with inflow. Now airbrush, let's just cover that one as a quick one. So let's just turn our airbrush off and I'm going to make our brush a little big and I'm going to set our opacity to around 30 and flow to 100. So let's click here for Let's click once with our airbrush turned off. Okay, now I'm going to click twice with our airbrush turned off. You see we've got lighter. Click three times with our airbrush turned off and we've got lighter still. But on this one, I'm going to hold the mouse button down. You see it's the same as the first one. So it's just painted 100% of 30% opacity with one click. Let me turn the airbrush on. The same thing. I'm going to click once and let go. Looks pretty similar, right? Now I'm going to click and I'm going to hold the mouse down and let go. Just like with a spray can, just like with an actual airbrush that artists would use, because I'm holding that brush or holding that spray can on one spot with the mouse button down, it's going to keep adding and adding and adding more and more flow but not more opacity. It's going to stop at the opacity level that I've set, but it's adding and adding and adding to this. Even though it's quite a soft brush, it's just going to keep spreading and spreading and spreading until it hits the outer limits, as you can see, that outer circle of our brush. Let's do the same with flow. So opacity 100, flow down to 30. Let's turn our airbrush off. I'm going to click once. And we get 30% of 100% opacity. Let's click twice. And we get our, yeah, pretty much 60% of 100% opacity. Let's do three times. And we get very similar results. So this is opacity. This is flow down here with the airbrush off. But if I click and hold down, we get exactly the same as above. Let's turn the airbrush on. Click once. Same as above. Click and hold. Now look at that difference. And let's think about what it's done in the background. So this one, as I clicked and hold, or clicked and held, it added more and more flow, effectively, it's adding and adding and adding, but only up to 30% opacity. With this one, as I click and hold with the airbrush option on, it's adding and keeping on adding more and more and more flow the longer I leave my airbrush or my pointer on the same pixels. So as I leave it on, it's, it's adding 30, adding another 30, and more and more and more and more, up until 100% opacity. And to prove how these two interoperate, let's set our opacity to 50 and do exactly the same. So we've got flow at 30, but opacity at 50. Let's do that same dot. I'm going to click and hold. And it doesn't matter how long I hold this mouse button for, that dot is never going to go above 50% opacity because that's its limit. That's its cap. So flow controls how long effectively I have to be or how many times I have to be over the same pixel to keep adding, but it'll only add up to that amount of opacity that I dial in.
And that's why typically a lot of people will have opacity set to 100 and flow set quite low with airbrush on, especially if you're using a tablet, that can help. And as I start to brush, I can be very, very, very nuanced and calm in terms of adding variations and feathering onto the mask. So opacity is the effectively how much light we want to achieve or how much mask we want to add or how much paint we're putting um, or, or how much color we're putting on the paintbrush. Flow is about how many times or how quickly and how many times we're going over the same spot to add more and more and more of that amount of light or that amount of color or that amount of paint on the paintbrush, depending on how you want to see it. So flow and opacity, two very different things. They behave in very different ways. The airbrush also adds another little um, change to the way that they behave. But there are two modes that I see most often um, people using. One is to have a very low flow brush around 15 with airbrush turned on at 100% opacity, typically using a very low hardness. The other, and this is actually the one that I typically use, is a very low opacity at 20, flow set to 100, simply because it means that I can control things one mouse click at a time. It doesn't matter how many times I go over the same spot. Effectively, because each stroke is only going to be 20% opacity, I can be really, really deliberate in where I'm adding extra light into this mask. Whereas with flow set at 20, an opacity set at 100, depending on how quick I am with my mouse, is going to have a very big effect on how much mask I'm laying down and how soft it is. So it's personal preference. Um, the effect, of course, if I turn the M or press the M button off, well, we can see our mask in red now, but if I turn the mask off, we can see the effect that that has had. So that's the effect of the mask on the picture. And only the areas which are light are going to be affected by that exposure change. And the lighter those areas are, let's go back to our grayscale mask, the more affected they'll be. So hope that all makes sense. Um, if not, send comments down and whatever into the video and we can always try and answer them. But flow and opacity are two very different things. They do very different, or they, they have very different ways of applying change to an image, but you can achieve very similar effects based on using one versus the other. Using the two together is really powerful. And just remember that flow is the amount of that opacity that you've dialed in that you're painting onto the mask.